It's just, it feels like the, the news around college football is very fluid to, to every day it's changing. Yeah, yeah, and that's going to continue, I think. Um, you know, throughout the SEC, fans are now becoming more aware of official news. Just yesterday, Georgia Athletic Director Greg McGarrity sent a, a letter out to the donors saying, you know, I, I, I know everybody wants to know what's happening. Um, we'll have concrete information once we get into August. You know, no one wants to move too soon because we're not sure what the landscape is going to look like here in 75 days or so, um, even though there's a lot of different plans out there. Um, you know, to me, and, and I don't mean to be insensitive to the fans who are absolutely stakeholders in this thing we call SEC football, um, but I'm just kind of focused on the on the little victories right now. And just to have a football season start on time, in my opinion, would be a major victory. So whatever we need to do to focus on that and get to that point, that's where I want to see us get. And, and then once we cross that threshold, then let's move on and figure out, all right, how can we get these loyal fans and people who support these programs um, through the doors and in the building and recreate these incredible – home field advantages like right there in Tiger Stadium. Uh, you were talking about the landscape, and it seems like one of the pieces of the landscape that is changing uh, in college football is, the, is the, the player empowerment. It seems like the player within the college sports right now, especially football, has, has a lot of power. I'm thinking of Kylan Hill at Mississippi State, the running back coming out and saying, look, is saying, look, until you guys change the flag in Mississippi, I'm not representing Mississippi State. You saw Hubbard at Oklahoma State force Mike Gundy into a couple of apologies after a shirt he wore last week. What are you, what are you making of, of of the players in their role right now? As it seems like it is a changing landscape in in college sports. Well, let's appreciate these guys for these bold moves. I mean, Kylan Hill is taking the fight to the entire state of Mississippi, and whether you think that is right or that is wrong, for him to put his playing career on the line and say, this is important enough to me to not have a carry this year. He's a guy who could have gone pro. He's a guy that um, was one of, if not the best running back in the league last year. Uh, and, and certainly from a returning standpoint has the most promise on the field. And Chuba Hubbard, that guy's a, you know, I don't think he gets enough attention football wise for what he accomplished last year at Oklahoma state, just a workhorse running back, uh, top 10 Heisman finalists before the season begins. And what you're seeing here, not just with Kylan Hill, but specifically with Chuba Hubbard and the guys out at UCLA, is um, a lack of communication. And I'm sure T-Bob can speak to this. A lack of communication from top down with your program only leads to problems. And it should help us appreciate those programs that keep their, their players um, not just I don't want to say you have to involve them in all of the decision-making, but let them know what's going on and communicate with them constantly. Because so many programs out there right now um, with the coronavirus situation are, are running circles trying to protect their players and protect the programs. And sometimes you have to constantly remind kids of everything that you do for them so they appreciate the hoops you have to jump through. I think, it's a, I think it's a great sign, this modern civil rights movement that so many youth are involved in right now, and I can't wait to see what a Kylan Hill does after his football playing career or a Chuba Hubbard. And if you get involved, if, if this is important to you and you get involved um, in local politics, I think it's only, uh, only going to benefit those communities to have guys with such varied backgrounds who are great football players then see what they can do from a civic standpoint. Uh, talking to Tom Hart, Heart to Heart, ESPN and SEC Network, play-by-play, -play, uh, the best, one of the most likable guys ever. Uh, Tom, you're, you're obviously very plugged into the SEC. LSU was in the headlines with 30 players being quarantined. We don't know how many tests are positive. Uh, but, but it doesn't seem to be the exception, right? It kind of looks like the rule if you look around the country. What's been your early reaction, and, and what have you heard out of these SEC schools in terms of uh, how, how this process is developing? Well, I think it is um, it is a process, and it's something that these coaches have never been through before, right? So we know coaches are creatures of habit, whether you're a head coach, a coordinator, or a position coach. And so they have to make major adjustments to follow the protocols, to protect their kids, and to prepare for a season. Uh, 
um, preparation is the number one word when you talk to coaches because they have to check so many boxes to be confident that they have put their players in the, in the right spot and position to succeed. So they are uncomfortable right now from guys I've talked to only because of the unknown and because they have to do things differently. I, we're going to you know, be prepared. We're going to see more positive tests for those programs that choose to share that information. And if you're looking for a silver lining, in my opinion, it's this. To get an idea of how this spreads within a program, to get an idea of how it affects this age group and guys in this demographic in terms of athletic fitness before the season starts would then leave them much better prepared to deal with it you know, once we get to kickoff. Because, guys, my concern, my secondary concern here is um, hopefully we're able to start this season on time. But then after, say, four weeks of banging heads with a guy in a different jersey across from you, what are these tests looking like on October 5th as opposed to September 5th? We need to make sure not only can we start a season, but that it can continue and not be interrupted after a few games. Tom, more news around the Major League Baseball, uh, around Major League Baseball and around its Players Association uh, since the last time we have spoke, and it's, it's no... It's no more clear on what the plan will be. It looks like they will open the season on July 23rd and 24th. Uh, They'll uh, hold a regular training camp, uh, 60-game season, 10-team playoff structure, um, but both sides still bickering at one another. What what, what do you make of the latest negotiations and where they sit? Well, the bickering is going to continue for a few years because they have to collectively bargain a new agreement there, and, and, and that's unfortunate. Nobody watches sports for the business side of it. They watch it to get a, a release from what they have to deal with in their, in their own lives and to be entertained. It is entertainment. So in that regard, I, one rule that I think is going to catch people by surprise once they start doing it is going into extra innings and putting a guy at second base. So yeah. listen, I am thrilled that they're going to play baseball. And when I first started thinking about this rule, I thought it was really cool because to me, the best postseason in sports is overtime NHL high in NHL playoffs like th- there's nothing better because you somebody could score any second there's a breakaway here breakaway there the, the puck gets turned over boom game over um somebody wrote one time that it was like um jumping out of a helicopter on a motorcycle during a cocaine binge I don't know I've never done any of those things <laughs> but that sounds like a very extreme situation I don't think putting a guy in second base with nobody out is extreme, um, but I like the idea that baseball is willing to tinker with their sacred rules um, because this is the this is the kind of season to do it. To do it, you only got two months of games before you hit the playoffs. You got to do things a little bit differently. We will speak to Roman Harper in the eight o'clock hour. Uh, he has had a hell of a week. Uh, he had a baby boy earlier this week. He got inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame yesterday. That became official. Uh, and then there is word that he's joining the SEC network. It seems like there's a lot of smoke around him joining you guys' team. Uh, what do you know about Harper? And uh, uh, he's going to be a key addition. He's going to be a great addition. He was with us all fall. Yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, the SEC Nation show is stealing my guy, Jordan Rogers. Uh, mm-hmm. we, I, I think we're going to still keep him on our Saturday night game. Um, and Marcus Spears is moving on to more NFL coverage, from what mm-hmm. I understand. So. There is, there is an opening there, and, um, and I love it. And you know what I hope he brings? <laughs> I mean, listen, this guy was a pro bowler. He played in the Super Bowl, um, you know, almost an unrivaled NFL career. But we know that the first thing LSU fans and everybody else in the SEC is going to focus on is the fact that he's an Alabama guy. Hell yeah. And I, I love it because I want him to bring the Bama heat and get everybody fired up. Um, th- what the SCC Network has done is, it, and they've hired the right people over the years, whether you played or coached at Auburn or Florida or Georgia or LSU, is it's allowed people to show their colors without being biased. And it speaks to the enthusiasm within, um, you know, within this conference that, that makes it go, that makes it, makes it tick. And I think that's wonderful. 
Uh, Harp is it? He's a rammer jammer. He'll let you know it for sure. Ugh, uh, him and McElroy. He is going to let you know it, man. Are going to be insufferable. <laughs> he will be waving the palm palm or the shaker or whatever the hell they call it, man. Uh, Tom, you were fantastic as usual. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Thank you. Thanks, boys. Have a great day. Right, Have man. a great day, Tom.